If you already have a website and an audience, then you can skip this video. Otherwise, it's crucial that you keep watching in order to ensure that your brand is aligned with your business model and the product you're selling. A good place to start is by asking what exactly a brand is. A brand is much more than a logo. Rather, it's an ethos, a mission statement and an approach to business. The logo simply tells people that the product or service they're receiving adheres to the same standards as whatever else they've used from you in the past. You start your brand by choosing why you do whatever it is you do. Why should people care about your business? How are you different from other companies offering the same thing? How do you want the world to change as a result of your business being a part of it? This is what allows a company like Apple to capture the imaginations of billions of people and to create such loyal customers. Apple isn't just about selling hardware. It's about selling beautiful hardware that feels personal and that is aimed very much at creative, rule-breaking individuals as opposed to big businesses. When the first Apple computers were released, the only real competition was IBM. And by taking this stance, Apple was able to differentiate itself a lot and get a lot of excited followers as a result. The same goes for many businesses that are setting out to create a greener planet. These companies are doing something more than just making money, and their fans love them for it. This is enough to make people choose their products instead of the same products offered by another business. And this ethos means that people know instantly that the service is aimed at people like them. So ask yourself what the driving motivation behind your business is. You're a fitness company. Okay, but what is it that you really believe in? Why is fitness important to you and your customers? Do you think that people are happier when they're well? Do you want to help the average person to have a more fulfilled life thanks to a healthy lifestyle and diet? Or do you love the idea of becoming more powerful? Are you all about building strength and speed and challenging the limits of human potential? These two companies might sell the exact same product, but the way they go about it is completely different. And if you can convey this mission statement, then you'll find the right type of customer will go absolutely nuts for your brand. That's the kind of customer whose vision is aligned with yours. Now, don't try and appeal to everyone, because that will never work. Instead, try to appeal more to the right kind of person. One way to do this is through your logo and your web design. The objective of a great logo is to communicate what your business is all about. You're trying to tell people what you sell and why you sell it as soon as they look at your business. So, say your company was all about health and natural products. Then you might make a logo that had a tree on it or a heart. And it would probably be green in colour and have an uplifting, healthy sounding name. Conversely, if your business is all about punishing workouts in the gym, then your logo might include a picture of a dumbbell or a barbell and have the word iron in it somewhere. The idea is that the combination of your logo, company name and perhaps blog posts is enough to tell any visitor to your site right away that this is a company aimed squarely at them, selling products they're going to love. This should also extend throughout your site design. Meanwhile, make sure that your logo is designed using a vector file, meaning that it's made in Illustrator or a similar piece of software that keeps it easy for you to edit and resize. And avoid using cliches. Once again, this is a good place to invest a little of your own money up front. It'll pay off in the long term. The mistake that a lot of people make is to try and sell right away. This can work sometimes, but it's not generally the best way to build trust, grow an audience and ultimately secure the best long-term profits. That's because it's somewhat similar to walking up to an attractive stranger in the bar and asking if they want to come home with you. 99% of the time, this will be met with a slap. 
most people prefer to get to know the person propositioning them at least a little bit first. So you need to try and introduce yourself properly and let the person feel that they know you and that they can trust you. This is the exact same for a business when you're trying to sell something. Imagine approaching a stranger in the street and asking if they want to buy from you. This is the basic concept of content marketing. To build an audience of people who love your content and who trust your opinion so that you can convince them to buy the products you recommend and so that you can keep bringing people back to your site time and time again, giving you multiple opportunities to make a sale. The way you do this is to start by writing high quality content and to post this to a blog on a regular basis. The more you write and the more you research your subject matter and make it different and interesting, the faster you'll build a dedicated audience you can sell to. Demonstrate that you really know what you're talking about, that you only recommend things you genuinely believe in, and that your audience can trust you to be a resource for more useful ideas and information. Likewise, try to build your mailing list and social media presence. Incorporate your brand strongly on all your social media pages and in anything else you create so that people will know they're dealing with the same business. Getting someone to follow you on social media when they think they might be interested in your brand is far easier than getting them to buy a product from you and actually spend money. Social media accounts will meanwhile help you to bring more new customers to your site by letting people share with their network. You can help this too by providing social sharing buttons, like these from shareaholic.com, that will let people easily like your content on Facebook or tweet to it on Twitter. Once you have generated a big audience of people regularly coming to your site, you should start thinking about introducing products to your page. If you've really created a brand you believe in, and if you've been providing real value in your content, you should find you have true fans, and a true fan will be desperate to buy your product when you start selling them. Of course, there are many additional methods you can use to send more customers to your products and to market your store. One option is to create your own affiliate program and to encourage more people to help market your items. Another method is to pay for advertising, whether this is a pay-per-click campaign through Google AdWords or whether it's an advert on Facebook that is highly targeted to your specific demographic. This works well in scenarios where you're selling from eBay or Amazon and aren't trying to build up an audience. If you're going to pay for advertising, though, you need to calculate the LCV, and that's lifetime customer value, of each customer. This will allow you to ensure that whatever you spend on your ads, you're making more back and thus seeing strong ROI, or return on investment. But to take this next step, you're going to need to make another new addition to your business. And I'll talk about that in the next video. Once you've chosen your products and niche and built an audience, the next step is to create your own e-commerce store. This is an online storefront where you can show your different items and encourage sales. Being successful here is not just a matter of choosing the right design to begin with, but also thinking about how you're going to arrange and price your items to help them move. This ultimately comes down to a lot of psychology. When it comes to e-commerce website design, there is a single overriding goal which isn't always true of a regular site design. Of course, that objective is always to try and increase sales and increase profits, and this is probably actually more important. You'll also want it to look attractive, to be functional and easy to use, and to represent your brand in the right manner. But this is really just in service of creating a web design that helps you to make more sales. This means every single element in your site design should be encouraging more sales and pointing users in that direction. The old adage here is that good design should communicate and not decorate. 
If an element of your design isn't somehow getting people to keep browsing your store or to click on the buy button, then it has no place in your design. If you use the right development company or a good e-commerce builder or template, you should find the experience and expertise of the professionals informs their decisions and results in the best possible turnover and profits for you. In this regard, it's always worth spending a little more on a professional theme or on a proper development company. Unless you're a professional designer yourself, you won't be able to compete with an entire organization made up of experts who have the very best tools and the most experience. And any lack of professionalism in your site design is going to reduce the trust in your brand and make visitors less likely to buy. An e-commerce store, more than any other design, needs to look professional and have a sense of polish and sheen. The easiest way for most digital marketers to create their own e-commerce store will usually be to use a WordPress theme like WooCommerce. Now, WooCommerce is a theme and plugin combination that will transform an entire WordPress site into an online store. And this makes managing your store just as easy as managing any WordPress website. You can still get a professional design for your site, meanwhile, by hiring a professional designer to create your theme for you, or by buying one that you really like the looks of and you think will fit your brand. Now, you can download the free version of WooCommerce, um, the, the WooCommerce plugin, that is, from within the WordPress dashboard or you can buy uh, the paid for version and you can buy the themes from WooCommerce.com. There are other options too. For example, Shopify gives you a hosted e-commerce platform. And this means that the site will be located off your server, just like a profile on Facebook, for example. You then send your customers to that page where they can shop through your multiple products. And this can help make things a little easier and simpler to run. But it does ultimately mean that you lose a little of the freedom and flexibility that comes you know, with terms of your website design and how it all looks and how it all works, etc. And there are local versions, um, the Shopify.com if you're in the US, Shopify.co.uk if you're in the UK, and there are some other uh, local versions as well. Now, do bear in mind that this is a paid-for service, but there is a 14-day free trial at the time that I'm making this video. Uh, either way, through choosing a well-known platform such as one of these, or Magento, which is magento.com, or big commerce, which is bigcommerce.com, will mean that you can find a large amount of support, free themes, plugins, and more that will help you sell. And some of these features can be incredibly useful, such as the ability to add widgets right there on your blog that promote your top items, for example. So don't steer away from the big players. Using these methods will help you to generate more sales by having a professional looking and performing website. Nevertheless, it's still always useful to understand the theory and principles behind it so that you can continue to implement best practices yourself, especially when it comes to aspects that fall outside the realm of design, you know, such as price. Now, here's how the right combination of pricing, positioning and design can help to make your items sell more effectively. And the first is contrast. Now, Contrast can of course be aesthetic and making choices such as using red buy buttons against a white background is a great way to make a particular element stand out and get more clicks. And this also comes down to color psychology, but we won't go into this right now. The other type of contrast refers to the way that you position items next to one another with the objective being to place expensive items next to cheap ones. Why? because this makes the cheap items appear even more affordable and the expensive items appear to be even more premium. Now, let's say you have a $10 tie next to a $50 tie. 
Someone who wants the very best tie might be all the more impressed by your premium offer, knowing that it's five times more expensive than the cheapest product. Meanwhile, someone who doesn't have as much money to spend and who feels guilty about buying a new tie can convince themselves that the $10 tie is a great deal. They can compromise and convince themselves that they're being sensible by choosing the cheap tie. You know, they've saved $40 even though they're still buying something they might not have otherwise. This way, the right pricing can really help to sweeten a good deal. And a good e-commerce website design should take full advantage of that. Earlier on in this series, we described why it was so important to have multiple ranges of prices in order to attract a range of different types of buyers. When we looked at contrast, meanwhile, we saw that varying prices could be used to make items look like an even better bargain or like they're of an even higher quality. But another very important reason to have cheaper items as well as more expensive ones is that it can be a great way to build trust. If someone has never bought from you before, they might feel concerned that the products won't arrive or they won't be as advertised. Even if they read your content and like it, they've no guarantee that what you're selling is going to be high quality or that the site will be secure from data leaks. Thus, they aren't going to want to spend $1,000 the first time they ever do business with you. But if you have an item that costs $5, and it's a product people will know, then someone might make that purchase because it's a small risk to take. Now you can demonstrate the quality of your service and save their details, making it much easier to sell bigger items in future. Another tip is to think about your top sellers and your smallest sellers and use this to inform the design of your store. Now, this is something that physical stores do a lot. They'll place their biggest drawers right at the back of the store. This way, people will come in to buy the thing they want, but to get there, they'll have to pass through all of the smaller items that you're also selling along the way, and hopefully they might buy something. Meanwhile, if you have items that aren't selling at all, then you can find inventive ways to make the most of it. Packing it in as a free incentive, for example, or selling it at a very discounted rate is a way to bring more people to your online store. This is less important for a dropshipping business model, of course, though, as there's no downside to being left with excess stock. What's important to consider when looking at an e-commerce website design is that in order to make a sale, you'll have to overcome certain psychological barriers. This is actually often the most important step in making a sale. These psychological barriers include such things as customers not wanting to spend any money and not being bothered to go through the process of checking out. Good e-commerce website development should take this into account first and foremost by making it as easy as possible for your customers to make purchases. This is why Amazon's buy with one click feature is so instrumental to their success. At the same time, webmasters need to make the most of customers who have already overcome some of these barriers. So, when a customer commits to buy any item on your site, they will instantly become much more susceptible to increasing their order. Why? Because they've already decided to make a purchase. This is why physical retailers use POS, this is point of sale displays, that sell extra items while customers are in the queue. It's so easy for them to add extra things to their basket that it would be foolish to miss this opportunity. E-commerce sites can do the exact same thing by making it easy to add extra purchases at the checkout. Similarly is upselling, where you give your buyers the opportunity to upgrade their order once they're already buying. Once they've committed to buy, tell them how for just $10 more they could have the very best service or product instead of the cheaper but ultimately inferior option they're currently buying. It's the smart decision after all. Sometimes a buyer will want some of your items but not all of them. 
other times they'll want to combine multiple items but won't want to pay extra for shipping or to pay full price when they're essentially buying in bulk. Thus, letting your customers combine their items into a single large order can often encourage more sales and it's known as bundling. What's great about bundling is that it can also be used to sell additional items that they perhaps wouldn't otherwise have bought. Adding extra items to bundled packages is also a great way to shift unsold stock.